2,000 years ago, Jesus spent more time healing than he did preaching. It didn't matter what the problem was, whether they were paralyzed, whether they had leprosy, even if they were dead, Jesus healed and helped. And he can still do the same today. But Jesus doesn't just care about your physical healing. He's interested in your other healing as well. And I want to share with you a story from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, that illustrate this perfectly. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Listen to this. Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 1, says, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even left outside the door. And he preached the word to them. So what can we get from this? Straight away, we can see that Jesus, when he spoke, people listened. Everywhere that Jesus went, a crowd would follow. And so these people were hungry to hear the word. They were hungry just to surround Jesus, to be in his presence. And so it says in this verse that he was surrounded by people so much that there was no room left. Let's continue. Verse 3. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. Desperate situations call for desperate measures. And here these men, four men, were desperate to get Jesus to see this paralyzed man because they knew that Jesus could help them. And so they went up to the roof, they dug through a big hole, big enough to lower him through, and then they began to, to lower him down to Jesus. Verse 5 continues on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Hang on. Is, is Jesus blind? Can he see that this man is paralyzed, that he needs something more than his sins forgiven? Friends, I want you to know that Jesus sees much more than what we can see. And what we only focus on the outside, the sickness of a person, Jesus saw that this man needed much more than physical healing. First, he needed to know that his sins are forgiven. Because there was this false teaching in Jewish times that if something was wrong with you, that it happened because of their sin. It happened because you were a sinner and this was God's curse upon your life. And so this man thought even himself, I, I can't be healed unless my sins are forgiven. And Jesus saw him. He saw his very heart. He saw his needs and said, son, your sins are forgiven. But this caused some issues. Notice in verse 6. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easy to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Yes, friends, Jesus is able to forgive sins. You don't have to confess your sins to another person or to, to a priest. You can go directly to Jesus and he will forgive your sins. And this is what this paralytic man needed. 
more than the feeling in his legs, more than knowing that he can walk again. He needed to know that he could have peace with God. And that's what Jesus gave him. But more than that, Jesus saw his physical need as well. And so he said, son, get up, take your mat and go home. And that's what he did. And just as Jesus helped that man today, he is still able to help us today. Whether that's spiritual healing that we need, and that's the most important thing that we need, friends, or whether it's physical healing, Jesus can help with that as well. But sometimes when we pray for physical healing, we don't experience it. And that's not a time to give up. That's not a time to be discouraged. Because Paul had this issue as well. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7 and 10, Paul shares his experience about the thorn in the flesh. Let me have a look at that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 7 to 10. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So friends, Paul understood it. He understood that even when he was weak of flesh, that he could be strong in the Lord. And so even if you are suffering from a terrible illness or terrible pain every single day, I want you to hold on to the Lord, to get strength from Him. Because when you are weak, then you are strong in the Lord. Thanks for watching our videos today. I hope you liked it. If you did, give us a big thumbs up and put a comment down below. But also, feel free to share this video with your friends either via the share link down the bottom or just post it on Facebook. We really appreciate getting God's word to more people. Thank you so much and God bless. You.